Welcome to TBS TV number six. Today we talk amateur boxing. We had a great show down at Narang last week, and this week we speak to Commonwealth Games gold medalist Shelley Watts. Shelley's here training for two weeks in preparation for the Olympic Games. She's our only female to qualify for the Olympics in 2016. We speak to her shortly. TV. Today we're talking to Commonwealth Games gold medalist Shelley Watts. How you going Shelley? I'm good, how you doing? I'm good. We've just finished a, a session today on the start of your camp to the Olympic um, Games. So how was it today? Yeah, it was alright. Um, a lot of fun and games when Shara is lead, leading the, uh, the session. We did a med ball dumbbell session, so just starting to work on some explosion and, exp and some speed, bringing that into my training. Um, I've just finished an eight week camp down at the Australian Institute of Sport. So I'm in a pretty good con condition for the body, but now we need to start sharpening up and um, getting ready to jump in the ring. Cool. So what actually got you into boxing? Um, I actually had an knee reconstruction. Like, you never used to be an elite athlete in any way. I never used to play um, at very high levels. I used to just play soccer and I was at university um, had to have a knee reconstruction and, and just started doing some boxing for fitness. Um, I only started six years ago. Um, and so, you know, it's been a pretty quick rise, but it's, um, it's a situation I think where boxing commits you to this lifestyle and it's, um, it makes you want to learn every single day and, and, and do better and do more. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't change for the world and, you know, it came from a pretty bad injury, but I'm pretty happy I had the injury to be able to come into boxing now. Yeah. So speaking about lifestyle, what sort of lifestyle changes have you made to be an elite athlete and continue on this road for six years? Yeah, so um, as a uni student, you know, I'm not gonna lie, most uni students have, have a good time and they party at university. Um, so that was the number one thing I've changed probably. Um, also, obviously your eating habits and, and making sure that you feel, fueling your body as best as it can really to make sure that you're going through some pretty hard sessions because we're going to be training 16 times a week so you know if I'm giving myself junk and, and a lot of sugar my body's not going to be able to perform very well. Um, you have to be more disciplined though and you have to be more determined I think because you know you've got set structures of training so um, I think that my university degree it started being a good stead of having to study and having to be at class on time and stuff like that um, but this just takes, takes to the next level. Yeah. You know? So keeping um, boxing and your commitment of study, how's that gone along since you've um, become more on the international scene? Yeah, so my first three years I was at uni and I hadn't started boxing yet. And my fourth year I had. So that was a big change for me because like I said, I was a, I was a you know, party and uni student for the first three years. And then the fourth year I, uh, I didn't drink and I was focusing on training. And so while well, everybody else was drinking in my lounge room, I was uh, outside skipping, trying to make weight. So that was a big change and a big difference. Um, you know, it was good though, I was able to speak to my law professors and work around my um, law exams and my, and my law uh, lectures with my training. So that was a really, um, a really awesome start. I went external then because I was travelling a lot internationally with Boxing Australia. And then um, I've just had to kind of juggle a little bit uh, on, on solid heavy years, so the Commonwealth Games year and then this year. I put my law degree on hold. Yeah. Um, I had two units to complete and I'll complete those after Rio. So. Um, and then I'll have the law degree and I probably won't go into the law field straight away. I want to keep boxing as long as I can. So but that'll be a nice little thing to be sitting for a plan B later on. Yep. So will we see a Shelley Watts at 40 still boxing? <laughs> no, I don't think my body's going to hold up now. It's struggling at 28. Um, I'll definitely box as long as my body wants to keep going though. Yeah. Um, I don't think that I want to be a lawyer until I'm 50 or 60 years old. Um, I actually got told by a lawyer once um, bugger off and go away until you're 50 because it's there's no point. Yeah. Um, so you know I'll definitely stay as long as I want to, but I don't see. I think I'll be walking around with a bloody stick by the time I'm 40 years old. <laughs> so how many bouts have you had now? And obviously your Commonwealth Games gold medalist bout was a very memorable one for you. But are there any other ones that stick in your mind for any particular reason? Yeah. So I've had 75 fights now um, in six years, which is a pretty good number and a pretty good ratio of fights per year. Um, you know, I guess that you put that down to hard work because the more you win, the more you keep competing and fighting in a tournament. So, um, you know, I work out in training, but 
obviously, you know, the Commonwealth Games was amazing and I can still picture every single fight, but the um, tournament that actually sticks to mind the most was there was a, um, a Cilician International Tournament in Poland and it was in 2013. Um, so, you know, it was prior to the Commonwealth Games and I was just starting to get a little bit more form in my boxing and we were away overseas and um, I was having to fight, the first fight I fought I had to fight uh, Natasha Jonas. Sorry, no, the first fight I had to fight was um, Alexis Pritchard and she was number 10, top 10 in the world, had been to the Olympics in London. Um, and I won that on a split. The second fight I had to come up against this, this French girl who had originally fought at 60, uh, 54, but she'd stepped up and she was a bulldog, man. I just remember she kept coming, we were playing um, guard on guard boxing and she just was letting her hands go and I had to be really, really tactical in that. I had to make sure I was catching all the punches but also letting my hands go when she was so that I was, I was countering her punches. And I remember going into the fourth round, Coach Bodo, our coach at the time, said to me, you have to dig deep, Shelley. Like my German accent, it's good. <laughs> you have to dig deep. You are very close, this is the close fight. You have to show me what you got. And I just thought to myself, yep, I got this. I can do this. And I went to that last round and I gave it everything I got and I won it on a split decision as well. Nice. And then I was um, lucky enough to have to fight against Natasha Jonas, who was top 10 in the world. I think she was number one at 64 kilos at that time. And um, Coach Poto in the corner before the fight, he goes, I don't know what to do with this girl. She's obviously very good. You just go in there and you see what you can do. So I went to the first round and, and I fought really well actually, you know, it was a pretty close fight. And then he comes back to me and he goes, this is brilliant. Hands in the air. And he goes, keep doing that. And I ended up losing the fight, but we were really happy with, with my decision. Even though, yeah. even though we lost, the way that I fought, we were really happy with it because she'd obviously been fighting for 10 years and I'd been fighting for, for three. So yeah. um, those two fights probably are, are two very good ones because I think that they, they showed me that I deserved to be on the international stage and, yeah. I, and I could take it with, with some of the top girls. Yeah. So those ones for sure. So going um, back to the Commonwealth Games, uh, your final belt in the finals, coming back from the third round, did you know you, you'd edged it and what were your feelings going into that fourth? Like what was running through your head at that stage? Yeah, I, I remember that. Um, you know, after the, after the fight, I went back to the reporters and they said, oh, you're actually losing the first round. I said, oh, really? Didn't know that. Because I thought it was close and I didn't feel like that either of us were getting on top and I guess, you know, the judges decided for her. I knew in the second and the third rounds I'd gotten on top of her. Um, she was tired. I was tired, but I wasn't showing her how tired I was. Um, and I knew, you know what, I've only got to, I've only got to push for 11 minutes and, and then I have a gold medal around my neck. So um, at the, the, third, the second and the third, I knew that I'd gotten on top of her and, and I just thought to myself, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. Don't be an idiot, Shelley. Don't do it. Like she, she can't keep going like you can keep going right now. Um, you know, I'm talking to you about, and I'm getting like tingles because I can remember that moment where I was like, all I'm gonna do, and, and I finished the fight, and I went over to the corner, and the coaches were ecstatic, and you know, we thought we had won, and then I was standing in the in the uh, in the middle of the ring with the with the judge waiting for him to raise my hand, and I was thinking, I've got this, I've got this, but you obviously don't know, and um, I was trying to be as confident as I could without obviously thinking, shit, shit, did I do enough? Did I do enough? But I think I, I knew I did, so. You know, it's a, it was, yeah, it's pretty amazing to be able to raise your hands like that. Um, I've been in the corner with coach Kevin Smith and he's a pretty cool, calm, collective bloke. How do you find him giving in the instructions and, and then going out there and um, executing them? Yeah, really, really good. You know, um, it's a very big difference and change from the last coach that we had. Um, but, you know, each coach has their own little, you know, tactical things that they do and their own little kind of uh, persona. He... Uh, he, um, <laughs> whoop, cameraman's telling us to yeah. do something. <laughs> um, he, yeah, he's great. He actually does a lot of work with us in the gym so that when we're in the corners, we don't, he doesn't have to speak a lot. You yeah. know, there's just a f uh, t two suggestions he gives us. And, and the reason why is because he doesn't like to puppet us. He likes us to be able to think on our feet and do our own work. Um, and so he does a lot of work with us in the gym. But in the ring, you know, he tried to, I think he just tries to look cool, you know, the British kind of yeah. um, cool cat, you know. So, uh, wrapping it up now, where do you see yourself in, say, five years down the track? Are we looking at uh, work, children, relationships, all of that sort of stuff? Yeah. So, as, as a female in the boxing, obviously, you need to think about kids. And I do want to have kids and a family one day, obviously. Um, I've got to find that Mr. Right, though. <laughs> She just hasn't. He just hasn't. Not around the corner. He hasn't, he's poor, hasn't popped. He might be around the corner, but I haven't seen him yet. So... You know, I, um, I, I have taken a little bit of a liking to some, some Maori men that play football because they have very attractive legs. Yes.
we'll see, I guess. But I'd love to still keep boxing as long as I can. So, you know, if um, my body wants to keep going, I'll go for another Olympic cycle. So we'll see. Awesome. Thanks for talking to us today, Shelley. Let's hope uh, we get the New Zealand Kiwi team over, rugby union team, big leg men over. Yeah, that'd be Shelley nice. To say hello to. Yeah. That's Team TBS. Uh, TBS. TBS TV. TBS He's not doing TV. a good job today, guys. Thanks. Here comes the, here comes the, here comes the, y'all don't really want it like, oh yeah, here comes the, oh no, here comes the, oh no, here comes the, y'all don't really want it. G'day guys, welcome to this week's edition of the Boom Box. I'm your host, Mitchell the Boom Makuma. This week we've got international, Phuket, Thailand. Let's go see what the locals have to say. G'day, good buddy. How you going? Yeah, it's good mate. Who's your favourite boxer of all time? Lucas Howes. I thought you'd say that. That's good. Who's your favourite boxer of all time? Lucas Howes. So. so who's your favourite boxer of all time? Lucas Howes. Looks like our dear friend Lucas made quite an impact on Thailand when he came here earlier in the year. Stay tuned for more exciting interviews next week on the Boombox. Thanks for tuning in to TBS TV once again. Thanks to Shelley Watts for giving up her time. And we wish you all the best in 2016 at the Rio Olympics. July the 2nd brings an amateur boxing show to the boxing shop. We invite all clubs from around Australia to turn up weigh in and get matched up on the day. We'll see you then.